Hello, this is Steve Grzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are in Adobe Photoshop Elements in part four of our eight-part basic training tutorial series. In the editing area, you'll see that we have what looks like a pretty simple photo. A family standing in front of a background with some text over the picture. But what's actually going on is much deeper than that. Now most of the time when you're editing photos from your camera, you're looking at a basic JPEG, it's only one layer, a background layer, a flat layer, and that's fine if you just want to adjust the photo and you want to put it up online and share it with your friends or whatever. But if you want to do more advanced work, you want to use some of the more advanced tools with the program. Now, if you go down here to the bottom right of the program, you'll see there are a number of buttons. If nothing is showing in the panel bin here on the right, make sure that you have layer selected. This is, to me, probably the most vital of all of the panels that will appear in the panel bin, although there are a number of panels, and we'll explore these a little bit later. But with layer selected, you can see there's actually a lot going on in this photo. We have, for instance, uh, two layers here, a yellow layer and a black layer that appear in the background but are actually disabled. This little eyeball here represents the enabled layer. You can turn layers on and off. For instance, I can disable the background there, the city background, and I can replace it with, say, our black background by enabling it. And so layers can be in your photo and yet not actually visible because they're disabled. So let's put my city background back in there. I like that. You'll also notice that we have text in this picture and this text is actually at the top as a whole separate layer. When text is a layer, it remains editable. So in other words, as long as I save this file in layers, anytime I want to edit the text, all I need to do is just double click on this little T and it opens up in the text editing area and I can change the text or enhance it or change any of its characteristics as you see down here when text is selected or when you're typing down in the tool options bin along the bottom of the program you have options for changing its font and its color and its look but probably the most interesting elements in the photo are the photos of the three individual people in the picture. Now what makes this interesting is that these three people weren't even in the same room at the same time. So they each are a separate layer and I can actually turn off individual layers here so you can watch them disappear. Here's a very important principle when it has to do with layers. Layers are like a stack of images. Think of it like a stack of cards in a deck. Now if each image fills the photo frame, the way this background does, this cityscape background does, then you can't see beyond it. That's all the farther you can see. But imagine your deck of cards also has some holes punched in it or that it's cut in irregular shapes. Now you can stack a whole bunch of images on top of each other and you see the topmost image, but wherever there's transparency or wherever something has been cut away, you can see the images below it. And that's exactly what's going on is that I have, look over here in the layers panel, I have this particular photo chosen with a transparent background behind it. So the photo here does not fill the entire frame. Most of the frame here is transparent around this photo. And as I enable these, you can see that I actually can stack them on top of each other. And I could change the order of these photos also, right? So if I wanted uh, this man to be in the foreground, I could drag this up above the other layers. And now he's in the foreground. I don't like that. I want him to be in the background. So I'm going to drag it down behind the others. But I also want you to notice one other thing. And this is something that was added in Photoshop Elements 15. You notice that above these three layers is the word group or it says group one. This is new. These are called layer groups or layer sets. And a layer group is actually a bundle of layers. So I can take all of these layers together. I'm just going to toggle it closed. And they can be treated as an individual layer because they're bundled together as a group. So in other words, I can enable or disable all three of those layers all with one click. Or I can treat them as individual layers and disable them one at a time. What's the advantage there? Well, suppose I did several variations of this photo. I could actually have one variation of the photo where these people are in a different order, 
or I have the color adjusted differently. And I can load that in here as a separate group. When I'm showing it to my client or when I'm trying it out, I can turn on an entire group or turn off an entire group at once. Now these layers, and this is a very important principle too, these layers are really only available in a PSD file. A PSD file is what's called a native Photoshop file. This is a working file. Now, in most cases, you can't use a PSD. You can't load a PSD up to, say, Facebook. It won't load. A PSD file is a working file. And if you were wanted to output this as a photo to send up to, say, Facebook, one of the first things you'd have to do is either flatten all the layers by selecting the option here under the Layers uh, menu flatten the image and then send it out as say a JPEG or a more common file type, a ping or even a TIFF. Or you could select the option here under the file menu, save for web. And here there is a built-in program that will generate a JPEG or a flattened image for you from the PSD file. Now, PSD files, as I say, for the most part, you'll always want to keep a PSD file as you're working on your photos. If you're doing some complicated work like this, always keep the PSD because a PSD allows you to continue to edit the uh, text as well as edit the individual elements. There are programs that you can send a PSD file to. For instance, if I were sending this picture over to, say, uh, Premiere elements to be used in a video, I would not need to flatten the picture. I can use it natively in its PSD form over in Premiere elements or in InDesign or in any of the other Adobe programs. But for the most part, think of your PSD file when you're doing complicated work anyway as your working file and then your sharing file would be in a more universal photo format like JPEG or TIFF or PNG. And that's part four of our eight-part tutorial on basic training with Photoshop Elements. If you join me, come back. Well, part five, we're going to take a look at how to do some cool special effects with our photos using the filter gallery. I'm Steve Grizzetti. Thanks for joining me.